the comments were like in the basement and he found his way into there and it was these big giant walls of all these awful comments. Yeah, and somebody this. was like, don't let him in there or whatever. And there was a dark, dank environment. The creators who created this, this scene, I remember watching this being like, everybody understands what's being told. Content creators are looking at the scene going, wow, you nailed it. Welcome back to the show. There's no telling where we'll go. So come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. All right, the drum set's moved out. Microphones are in place. Yeah. Lighting has been changed once again. We're here. We're ready to record. We're ready for another podcast. This is going to be number four. Yes, be number four, four already. Jeez. Yeah. So we got like a whole month now yeah. of podcasts. It's going good. Remember we said we, were, we weren't going to stop. We're not going to stop. And and that's, you know, we're getting a lot of excellent feedback. And I'm seeing in the comments that there's some of the podcasts are like, I don't know, it seems to be influencing people in a very positive yeah. way. And and I think that we had a kind of a subtle intention to do that um, in a positive way. And at the same time, be cautious um, of, of how we tread because neither one of us presumes to be the authority on any of the things that we're talking about. It's right. just our thoughts or whatever, but getting a lot of really positive feedback. And I, and I got to say, here's, here's what's interesting to me. It, there's people, you know, changing things in their lives and taking things to heart. And I dig that, but the best comment I've seen so far was uh, great cameras, great angles, fastest growing pains ever. And I was like, that was actually a really nice thing to say because yeah. when you juxtapose episode one with episode two from a visual standpoint, uh, wow. Yeah. It was amateur hour in the first one. Yeah, I think um, <laughs> as usual, we're just every week kind of taking a look at what we're doing and seeing what we can improve, you know? Yeah. Even picking up on on little things that we do, you know? Yep. It's like you caught me looking at the camera and stuff and you, and you let me know and then you caught yourself. You know, and you're, we'll probably still have these, these oh, yeah. things happen, you know, but we're trying to every week at least figure it out and yep. get better. So uh, the people that just listen on Spotify, you don't have to, to, to worry about any of that, which is nice. But yeah. uh, also lighting has been insanely hard to get done in this small space. Like this room, just to let people know, we're, we're going to peel back the curtain to start this one, I guess, because mm -hmm. we are going to talk about content creation. And, and this goes into that is this room that I've set up in this podcast and it's, it's 12 feet by like eight feet. So, and we've also kind of set up on, on one side of it as well. So there's yeah. much more space behind you than there is behind me, which makes it very hard to get proper lighting on you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we, we tried something different today, you know, for those viewing on YouTube, you probably noticed, but, uh, it's just, it's always a struggle just trying to like figure out the exact settings. <laughs> we've even bought cameras. You know, yeah. we got new after yeah. episode one where we were using webcams, we bought new cameras <clears throat> to try yeah. to up our quality. And so it's it's coming along, but it's definitely a struggle trying to like perfect this. And I think well it'll be a journey that we're always on. Yeah. Right. Which is is that's a thing to talk about in, in this podcast, I guess, with content creation is per, Im, improving is always a journey. Yeah. Right. So it's, anyway. My my a really good friend of mine is uh watching a lot of these and and he'll send me feedback and he's like, you know, you had a couple black eyes in that last one. Cause I'm yeah. like, yeah, we're trying to figure out the lighting. Like you were saying. And yeah. there's a certain irony that you said, we're going to peel back the curtain. Cause we fixed it by actually peeling back. <laughs> oh, the that's curtain. true. Yeah. <laughs> we literally <laughs> peeled back yeah. the curtain. So there's like a, there's a window behind me yeah. and half of the window is covered by a curtain. And then the other half, we decided let's just open it up yeah. and let the light shine on Skiz's beautiful face. <laughs> <laughs> and now the YouTube crowd's like, ah, <laughs> No, no I'll go back to where yeah. you had no lights yeah. on. Well, I, you know, I'm going to move to audio only. Yeah. No, but you bring up a good point is that it is, you know, when you, you use the word journey, that's what it is. Yeah. It's, it's a, a constant learning. And and today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what it is to be a content creator. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm very curious on how this is going to come across to people who are thinking about it, you know, yeah. and, and and they might be perking up their ears right now thinking, okay, what, what is this going to be about? Well, I assure you, uh, the best, <laughs> the best thing about being a content creator is you you've got to be, you've got to be diligent. Obviously, you've got to be committed. You got to be thick skinned I mean, there's just so yeah. many pieces that go into it because at the end of the day, when you are doing something, when you're when you're when you're producing something, uh, it, it's kind of your baby, you know, and yeah. and then you're putting it out there in front of a, a whole lot of strangers to scrutinize. And 99% of people are, are, are great and, and, and whatever, but there's going to be that 1% that, that, that is going to, I don't know what their goal in life is. It's just to tear people down. And, and that's what they yeah. do. And, 
you know, I'm an old guy, you're an old guy, and, and it doesn't bother me. I doesn't, I just don't care. I, you know, this, this is like, <laughs> you're better at it than I am. I am better sure. than you. That's and and sure. it's always, and, and even before we were doing the YouTube stuff, like when we were just buddies or whatever, we'd be out in public and not that I was, a, 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 you know, me, I'm always been a good guy or whatever. But you're like, oh, what if so-and-so thinks this? I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. But then you'd be like, but I do. I'm like, I don't care about that either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about content creation and, and some things that we've we've learned through this process. But I, I hope that even if you're not looking to, like, become a content creator yourself, maybe you're just curious on yeah. how it all works. Because I know that going into this whole thing, it looked easy from the outside looking in, mm -hmm. right? Like, you, you think, oh, okay, you just... You have to figure out some recording software and then you play a video game and then you post it to YouTube and that's that's it, right? But once you start to dig in, you realize there's just so many other things that go along with it to the point now that like at the end of the week, I'm like, wow, I only got a chance to record like four hours of footage this entire week. What did I do with the rest of the time? Yep. And I started thinking about, oh, I had to deal with this and oh, I had to deal with that. And there's like so many other things outside of just hitting record that happen that take up your time as a content creator. And I think people might be interested to hear about what those what those mean. And especially people that may be thinking about doing this because it, it might be eye opening to, to realize it's not that easy. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't want to sound like some entitled content creator, but it's not that easy. Yeah. You know, I can tell you I've learned through this process. And so, yeah, let's dig into some of the things. And like you said, not only is it just the technical stuff, which, you know, I. I love, I love the technical piece. I can always solve the technical problems, but there's a lot of um, psychological yep. stuff that goes behind being a content creator. And we can dig into that too. So uh, where do you want to get started? You know, that's, that's a great question. So this, I, I want to talk a little bit about, <clears throat> pardon me, the Delta between the audience and the creator for a second. Okay. Cause when you talk about that, you know, there's a lot that go into it that, that people don't quite understand. That's, probably a colossal understatement, right? In terms, and anybody who uh, who's listening, who is a content creator and does this is probably like nodding their heads. Like they, people have no yeah. idea. And, and, and it's so funny when people scrutinize, you know, movies for being bad. I'm like, why, why don't you go try and make a movie? Why don't you go make right. five seconds of a movie, you know? Yeah. And, 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 or, or that scene, that explosion they did in that movie, it was so fake. I'm like, it probably took six months to get the contracts that they needed for that, all the different safety, like, like you have no yeah. idea what goes into this stuff. And so my wife and I, we really enjoy watching, I'm going to, there's a free plug here. We enjoy watching Tim and Wit, right? Tim and Wit is a YouTube channel, um, and it's it's Whitney Port. She was, you know, reality star on the Hills or something like that. I don't remember. But now her and her husband Tim, that he actually they met because he worked at the sets that she was, you know, a performer on, and now they're married, and uh, they do they do this, and he so he knows this stuff, and there's mm -hmm. still a huge struggle <laughs> to the point to where they would film. You know, uh, they're doing, it's a reaction, what they do. It's a, they, they react to old episodes of, you know, her old show and whatever. Uh, it would, to a point to where they would film entire, entire segments. And the camera was focused on a chair in their kitchen the entire time. <laughs> the whole time. So you're watching this and they're massively out of focus. You know what I mean? You got so, me nervous. I'm going to check. I know. Quick. Well, see, All that's right. just it. We they, just like, okay. they didn't have monitors like this, right? Ah, so okay. like, so we, when I know that when I'm editing, when I know it's going to be on you, I'm like looking and checking stuff and coming back and, and things like that. So my point being that he was, he's a professional and he's very good and their growing pains were still quite real. Yeah. And so they got to the other side. And now when several days goes by and not to mention, you know, they're married, they have a kid and stuff. They're busy. They have other jobs. My wife's like, they haven't come out with one. They need to come out with more. I'm like, you don't understand how yeah. <laughs> this is very complicated stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot to do. So you have to, as a creator, be at peace with the fact that n your audience is not going to understand how difficult um, it is. And you're right. It's, it's so much goes into it before just hitting record. But if you want to be a creator, that's too bad. It's not up to them to get it. They, their job yeah. is to enjoy what you're creating. That's their only right. role. And if they don't enjoy, well, you better find a way to pivot and, and change mm -hmm. your content. Right. So as hard as it is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it, you just, just be at peace with the fact that they're not going to, people are not going to get it unless they actually do it and focus on what is the gift that you're actually trying to give them right yeah yeah i mean take for instance our um you know we had lighting issues of course and we probably still do and the second i think it was the second podcast for whatever reason the camera that was on me made me like orange yeah. you know yeah. and you did your best uh you, you've been editing on the podcast which i appreciate by the way Thank yeah you. <laughs> um uh you did your best to kind of color correct it or whatever but like there, there was no fixing that amount of orange it was it was a much better but and so then i was like oh I don't know a lot about cameras. You know, I know enough to like get by, but it, 
I then I started having like, okay, I'm gonna go do some research. All right, what's ISO? What's white balance? What's aperture? What's all this stuff? You know, and I start to to learn more about cameras, and I realize, okay, we need we need cameras that can handle more low lighting because we're in a room. There's not natural light in here and that kind of stuff, and we add more lights, but we can only put them so close to us because it's a small room, and so all this stuff. And I'm like. So I'm basically learning how to be a professional photographer now yeah. because I want these to look good, you yeah. know, and that's just one step of the way, you know, it's obviously the podcast, which means we have to have decent audio. And so we had to, uh, you know, learn about audio processing and how do we can plug, go, you know, XLRs into a, into a box. that's going to have dual inputs because we have two of us now and not just the one that I'm used to and figure all that out, like how to separate our audio into tracks, how to balance it. You do a lot of balancing mm-hmm. and post editing. So and then it goes into video editing. I mean, it's just like it goes on and on the number of like jobs yeah. that we've had to learn just to do this. Yeah. And that's that's insane if you think about it. I know. The first podcast was 47 minutes long or 51 minutes, something like that. And it took me five and a half hours to edit. Wow. And it's like, what? What? This should not take that long. And it's because I'll be honest, I don't I didn't know idea what I was doing. I didn't know what I was, I didn't know. I mean, I know how to edit, but, but right. I know how to edit in a very different world. Right. So this was like understanding, uh, you know, the color correction feature that Adobe has. I had to go research. What, what is that? How do you apply that? What's the best way to apply that? Uh, in terms of uh, uh, properly editing multiple angles, I was doing that all wrong. I was manually doing it. There's a better way. I've gotten better, but the evolution of the product that increases, it, it seems to be in parallel with just us getting better yeah. uh, at what we're doing. Right. But uh but that's, you know, that's just, that's just sort of the building blocks. And, and that's, that's, that's the fun part um, behind the scenes or whatever. And somebody asked me like, so you do all the editing? I said, I do. And they go, well, what is, what is, what is impulse to? I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> like, you know, I was like, what, yeah, I, like, he's handling all the accounts of everything we're doing. And he does the high majority of the setup. And he mm-hmm. understands on a tech, like, let me put it this way. If it was, if you couldn't be here and, and, and you're like, Hey, listen, I'm gonna be late. Can you go start setting up? I'd be like, no. <laughs> yeah i'd be like i mean i could yeah but you're just gonna end up redoing it all yeah. i have no idea what you do here like i get excited on podcast days because i i get excited and i can't sleep i wake up at 6 a.m and i before my eyes are even all the way open i'm out here pulling cables out and yeah. starting to set up like i i love that part of it though i always have like the technical logistics piece yeah. of this of content creation you know you know me like i i have lots of cameras and stuff now and i just keep buying stuff because i'm like i i love technology and i love seeing what i can do with it and then when it came to this i was like oh look at all this stuff i already have let's just use it we're good to go you know so it's it's been fun for me i I really enjoy that part speaking of um the account stuff this is new instagram tiktok oh yes more plugs happening we have them now (laughs) yeah posted nothing to them yet but (laughs) if you if you look on instagram for imp and skiz you'll find us um Actually, my wife said she's going to help us with that. Oh, good. So she's going to post like at least our thumbnail and a link to our podcast and stuff. And um, one thing we're hoping to do is to take little segments out of some of these podcasts that, you know, like little one minute clips that that maybe resonate with people and kind of post those things. And maybe even Facebook. I haven't done the Facebook yet because Facebook oh, frightens sure. me. But my yeah. wife's good at it. I'll let her handle it. So Excellent. she's even even my wife's kicking in on this. That's journey. wonderful. So, yeah, pretty That's, cool. And there's so many different there's so many different angles. Right. And I like the idea of these little because I think it was in the first or second one. Right. We issue a little challenge at the end. That Mm -hmm. would be a good moment for one of those things. And a lot of what we talk about is is just casual conversation, which is what a podcast is. But uh, every once in a while, we find ourselves in a space to where one of us is saying something where we're like, that's that's a this is a good moment. And this is that's good to capture those. Yeah. Take those and uh, put them on other platforms for people. Yeah. Help uh, help get found. That's, you know, with podcasts, that's one of the other things that we haven't quite figured out is is. How do we get found? You know, the reason when we first talked about doing a podcast, I think you had it in your head. It was going to be audio only. And I said, no, let's get the video going as well. So we can put it on our YouTube channel. You remember and what I said? You, you were like, that's that's going to be a lot of work. That's going to be. Yeah. Good. And I wasn't against it. I said, I'm down. But you need to understand that doesn't make it twice as hard. That makes it a thousand times yeah. harder. Yeah. And you were absolutely right. Yeah, <laughs> it's but, very but it's worth it, you know, because right now our you know, and this is going back to content creation is like kind of understanding where your audience is and, you know, our infant skills channel as as people are watching the YouTube can probably see we have a silver play button on this back wall. Ooh. You know, we've we've been able to grow it over like just over two years to a hundred thousand subscribers and like to to be able to put our podcast in front of them to help get it started, help spread the word was probably a, a good move. And I think that's still probably where we get most of our people 
watching and listening to this podcast. So mm. um, plug for those that are just on Spotify. If you want to see the video version, it's over on the Infant Skiz channel and then vice versa. We have we've been putting this podcast on everything else, basically Spotify and Apple and, and Google. So it's, a, it's been nice. It's it been nice to see the reception of this and um, really love the especially when we issued like the challenges and stuff for, for people to say like, hey, listen to your podcast. It inspired me to do X. And I'm like, even if, even if that, like, that was our only listener (laughs) and they, and we got that comment, I'd be like, I would be willing to put in the hours of work we put in every week to tear down the drum set that's in the way now and set up all these mics and stuff. You know, it's like, it's totally worth the effort to me to, to continue to do this. If it's uh, impacting people in a positive way. Man, see, and that's where I, that's where I have a lot to learn from you. This is something I've always admired is that like you've said this too, and you believe it too. You're like, dude, if we affect one person, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, it's not. Like, like that's uh, it's so terrible. I'm not. I'm happy about affecting e- one person. Yeah. But my brain's like, no, mo- I'm more. I want. I want to affect more people. I want oh, more course. people to yeah. enjoy this. But to the point to where, like, you, you, dude, when you first started, this is this is a good segue into resilience. I want to talk a little bit about resilience okay. as of a content creator, and then I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the product itself. But when you talk about the resilience of a, of a content creator, we like you have to set up little gems for yourself to go after. Mm-hmm. And when you first, when when your channel was first kicked off, right, in 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 like nobody knew who Impulse was, and then it, you started to make just a little bit of money from it, right, a little bit. I remember you saying like you made your first like forty dollars, and you're like, that's my Cox bill. Right. Yeah, and I was, internet. Yeah, yeah, that's my cock. <laughs> for that's, people that don't for, know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. The internet. internet. No. <laughs> uh, that's my, that's I, your yeah, internet that, provider. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what you said. That's my, that's my cock spell. I'm like, awesome. That, that, and I actually felt like that was awesome. Mm-hmm. And every step of the way you did that, then you got to a point to where it was, you know, you were actually becoming far more independent in the world of, of creation. And I was, you know, uh, on your tails trying to, you know, make my own path. And I kept comparing myself, which is not a good thing to do. No. And when I first started making money, like I was like, people asked me, what do you make? And I'd say nothing. And, but you would say, but you would be like, no, that's your Cox bill. Yeah. I'm like, well, it's a little bit. And you're like, get, you can't be like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you want to be resilient in this game, there's more, you like, you have to just keep plugging. You got to, even when like things are going to go well and then things are going to go bad and then things are going to go real bad. Yeah. And then without even knowing why things are going to go really well. And you have no idea why. What, what is happening? Yeah. You have no, it doesn't make it's any a, sense. It's a fickle environment to be in for for, for real. I mean, yeah. uh, definitely up days and down days. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. You came over this morning and you're like, are you okay? Like, what's wrong with you? You're a little somber today. And I was like, yeah, my Hermitcraft video is not doing so well. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I worked really hard on it and it's not doing so well. And I was a little bit down about it. And it, it, just, it just happens. Like, it's it's hard to control that. I want to get back to the, the comparison thing because that's huge. Yeah. Um, there is a quote that... I didn't know about, but Mumbo liked to say a lot. And I think it was, I think it was Roosevelt that said it. I might be wrong, uh, but he said, comparison is the thief of joy. And like that has resonated with me so much because every time I see myself uh, looking at other content creators and going and thinking, you know, you know, I feel like I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm, I hold a candle to, to their quality and, and their level of, of what they're doing. Why am I not getting the views they're getting? And then I realize I got to stop doing that because it's making me sad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they had their journey. I have my journey. They're not the same journey. They're never going to be the same journey. I just need to accept that and just be myself yep. and do what I can do because that's what I can control. I can't control how I compare to them. I can control how I do with my content. And the other thing that that I realized is numbers, man. Like as a content creator, we can get so wrapped up in the numbers. That stinking nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 oh. that they show us on the uh, YouTube dashboard brutal. is the worst thing ever. It yeah. is like it, it can, when you hit one out of 10 and it, and it fireworks go off on the web page and stuff, like it can be a great adrenaline rush or dorp, dope dopamine rush. Yeah. Um, but then when you hit 10 out of 10 on, especially on a video that you worked 12 days and you worked your tail off on, like it can really bring yep. you down emotionally. Oh yeah. And to be able to like ride that emotional roller coaster for now going like I'm almost in September will be my 10 years on YouTube. So for 10 years, 
like uh, there's a reason why there's much this much gray hair on my head <laughs> you know what i mean like i think it expedited the process yeah <laughs> so it's been it's it's been a journey though like i would i wouldn't take back don't get me wrong i don't I don't want to sound like, you know, ungrateful or whatever. I wouldn't take back a second of no. it. But it really does. It really does put you on one heck of a roller coaster. And, um, you know, regardless of level, you felt the same, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, so comparison is the thief of joy. That is something I'm locking in. That is good. Yeah. That is very, very good. I've, I've never heard that. And I wish I had. I mean, you hear, you know, all you hear phrases like that all the time in regards to the detriment of comparison. The only person you should be comparing yourself to is the current version of you and the version of you you want to be your new reality. Like, like just you, just do that comparison and mm-hmm. work towards that. And and compare yourself to what you, you know, if you're on an upward trajectory, no matter what you're trying to do, compare yourself to who you used to be. You know nice. what I mean? Be like, you're whooping them, you know? Yeah. And that's, 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 my, who is it? We, our trainer back in the day, right? I'll say his name. Our, our trainer Jason at CrossFit many many years ago. Um, I was I I was you know I was very out of shape when we joined, and I just dug in and dug in and dug in, and uh, and you know made a lot of good changes. And his whole thing was because I used to refer to who I used to be a lot, and and uh, but in a negative way, like I was still that person. And he was like, "You're that guy. You're not allowed to do that anymore." Like he was done. He's like, "Look at you and look what you've done." Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, you couldn't do a single pull up when you got in here, not one. And you can do 15 unbroken, unassisted. You know, he's like, you, you have to stop, you know? And so that yeah. got me thinking like, you gotta, you gotta just be at peace with where you're at and be hungry for where you want to be. But when you're comparing yourself to others, other people that are completely out of your sphere of influence, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You got to stop doing that. And yeah. I do it all the time. I, and I can't, how can I not? You're my best friend. And so, and I'm always watching your numbers and I'm always watching it. And I'm like, how come I'm not there? And that's just such a dumb thing to do. It's yeah. just so stupid. So just get, get diligent on what you know you're supposed to be and, 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 and keep working for it and show that resilience. And when things go south, you got, the resilience is very, very big for me. Right. I, mm-hmm. let's talk about, okay. So for example, the reason I was able to tell you, Hey, the cameras are going to change everything because the difference of these cameras and like a, a webcam setup night and day webcam you set it once you set and forget right mm. but these nuances are very different so i used to do the story time with skizzes a long time ago and the setup was you know people like they were very well received and people wanted more of them and i have a huge list of stories i'm like that's not the content that's hard I, like the setup <laughs> takes many many hours and on top of that when i would be doing a thing i'd be like in my animated way talk about something. And then I, the next thing I would be like two inches from the camera and I'd be like, Oh yeah. And then I would come back, whatever that. Oh yeah. That was like 25 minutes of my life. You know what I mean? Cause I would get in there and I'd be, and I'd have to find a way to put something in front of the camera that could focus it. And I would do this and get the lighting just right. And now that's not going to work. Okay. Let's do it again. And then the best part is you'd go and I would digitize everything or not digitize, but I bring it all into the computer. Now it's time to actually edit. I'm like, Oh, audio is out the whole time. You know what I mean? And, And that, that was that, took me an hour to record everything and okay, let's go see if we can muster up that energy all over again. Yeah. You know, and their, their story, their story times with skizzes out there that were like my fifth or sixth take, you know what I mean? Because it was just like the, the, something went wrong every time. But if I wanted it to be a thing, resilience was key. You have to just pedal forward, keep in motion the whole time. Yeah. I remember, I remember you mentioning that, that you were doing those was a (laughs) chore for you especially yeah. and and uh you knew that i like this stuff like and so you're asked to be like i just need you to come over like i just want to hire you to yeah, come yeah, over and you'll get, set up yeah. all my stuff for me and i just so i can just record yeah you know like you were looking for that out and and unfortunately neither of us are at a level now where we can just hire all this out oh yeah you know like somebody come over and move my drum sets and set up our pocket no we still got to get our hands dirty in the yeah, oh yeah and uh but i like i said i like doing it you know yeah. like i wake up early to do it and it's it's kind of my it's my way to like i i put on tool you mm-hmm. know and i just start you know i put on their discography i'm on undertow still uh <laughs> this morning and so i just turn that up and get, get kind of amped up for the podcast and put, get myself in that that headspace you know to just really be here, be ready to be present for this podcast. Yeah. And I've been, I didn't, I didn't know when we talked about doing this podcast, I didn't know I was going to enjoy it this much, to be honest. That's great to hear, man. Yeah. That's good because I have like, you know, I have, a, I always have this fear that you, you're kind of like, oh, why did I sign up for this? You know what I mean? And, and because I'm enjoying it too, I really am. And 
I, but I'm, a, I, in the beginning, I'm like, I don't think he's aware of how much work this is going to be. Right. You know, and, and I, I had, I mean, even though you're technically more sound than I am in this type of stuff, I, I had more experience in regards to what it actually is to set up something like this on two levels. One was this, and one was I used to do event management for a huge, huge thing. And, mm. and watching them, I mean, it would take, it was, it would be, it would take them two days to set everything up. And it would be like half a million dollars worth of equipment that they're setting up. And I just watch at what's going on. And the end state product was good. I'll be honest. It wasn't that much more complicated than what we're doing right now. You know what I mean? It was an entire team of people, but you know, it was a big room. So they had cranes in there and bringing yeah. the trusses down. And I'm like, it's so funny when people see the finished product on this for the, you know, the, the company, when they see the finished product, nobody's going to think about what went into that. You're, yeah. you're, they're not going to. So that's why I had that fear that once we got a couple under our belt, you'd be like, listen, this, this is fun and everything, but oh my goodness, I don't have this, you know what I mean? And I appreciate, I come over and you've set up 99% of the setup and all you, all I do is do framing on the cameras and we're off to the races. So the, to hear you say that you're enjoying it as much as you are, is very reassuring, but I mean, if things change, we'll just have a conversation. It'll be, it'll be fine. <laughs> Don't feel like you have to do this. <laughs> Maybe someday this will blow up big enough and we can buy a studio and just leave everything set up to where we can just walk in. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll have we'll have people that can hit record and do the camera work for us. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Amazing. Come on, peeps. Let's make it. Let's make it happen. No. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so getting back to content creation, you know, try, we're, we're trying to kind of peel back the curtain and let people hear a little bit about what they might be getting into. So let's speak directly to those people. I like it. Um, the, so you kind of mentioned that resilience is a big deal. And <clears throat> I kind of mentioned that having multiple skill sets is also necessary, right? Like you can't, what, one I think is important is, is what are you bringing to your content that's unique and different? You know, like, are you bringing charisma? Are you bringing something uh, different style? What are you doing? Right. That's important. You know, that like, if you're going to create content, I think it's important to think about, what's going to separate you from the pack, you know, especially nowadays it's, it's saturated, such a saturated market, the content creators galore out there. Right. And there's a lot of people that want to become content creators that are trying. So mm -hmm. you're, you're swimming upstream already. Right. So you got to have that resilience to continue swimming, even when things don't look good. Right. Because it would have been easy to give up when I had a hundred subscribers after six months, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and my family's going, you're you're working on this stuff a lot like you're losing sleep are you sure it's worth it and i'm just like i gotta keep going yeah. you know i gotta do this you know and i was at, at least at the time i was still doing it because it was more of a hobby and it was fun for me and i wasn't really like i'm going to get somewhere with this right. you know but i knew i wanted to keep going and just see what could happen if i did um so yeah resilience is a big part of it but also understanding that there's more to it and you got to be you got to be ready to do more than just hit record and play video games or whatever it is you're doing if you're vlogging or whatever you got to realize and it, like what we're saying you're you're gonna you're gonna have to learn how cameras mm -hmm. work if you're gonna be on camera you're gonna have to learn how lighting works especially if you're gonna be on camera you're gonna have to learn how audio works you, you're gonna have to learn how to make thumbnails i mean i hate to say it and i hate i i hate this about youtube i really do how important titles and thumbnails are yeah and the reason i hate it is because it's actually the thing i'm worst at oh <laughs> i think out of everything so like coming up with a catchy title and making my thumbnail really stand out to where somebody wants to click on it i still after almost 10 years now have not gotten good at that because i just innately am not like an artist or um a marketing you know a right. type of personality you know and so i struggle with that and a lot of times um, I'll get help, you know, from friends that are better, you know, like Green will tap me on the shoulder and be like, dude, that thumbnail, uh, -uh. uh yeah. here's what I would do. Yep. And I'm like, thank you. Yes. You know, even you've reached out yes. and you've reached out to me as well. We've gone back and forth with some of this stuff just because it's, it's nice to, you kind of get stuck in a little tunnel vision when you envision how something's going to go. And then when you, when you put it up there, you're so stuck on it, you don't realize it's bad, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so having a separate set of eyes or, or more can definitely help, but that's one thing that I'm like, I don't know if I'm ever going to get better at that. I mean, I, I have slowly gotten better, I think, since like first year, but I don't think I'm ever going to like master that because I just don't really feel like it's an, an innate equal, like quality that I have, like skill set that I have that I'm born with. You know? Yeah. And you might be right. I mean, there's you've definitely I think you may know you might never be a master at it, but you've very clearly gotten better at it. And, and so when you say you have to have a lot of skill sets to do this. 
it doesn't mean you need to have them up front. You're going to yeah. you're gonna get them. You're going to end up getting them. Like <clears throat> my, my brother came into my studio and I was doing something on, you know, I was editing something and he just goes, I, I don't, how do you know how to do this? Yeah. And I said, I don't know. Like I, I realized <laughs> I don't actually don't know. I, I don't know how I know how to do this. And what's funny is the very first time I ever opened Adobe Premiere Pro ever that that is an extremely intimidating program. Oh yeah. When you've never opened it. And, mm-hmm. and I'm talking, this is, this was probably five years before you started your channel. Right. I, I did it because at my job, there was a guy that was, a uh, did a lot of, um, um, not dirt bikes, but just, geez, mountain biking. Geez. Okay. The word mountain. <laughs> uh, did a lot of mountain biking with him and his crew. And he was like, do you think you could make a video for us? Cause I, you know, I always talk about, I did it in school and stuff and it was mm-hmm. old school applications. And I said, yeah. And, uh, and my brain's all, no, you can't. I was like, like, you haven't touched this stuff for a long time. You haven't, you know what you would use. And I, I knew that what Adobe Premiere was. And I said, I'll use this. And one of our buddies was like, you'll never figure out that program. That was the first thing he said, you're never going to figure out that program. <laughs> And so it took me, uh, probably the first hour was learning how to get the footage into Adobe. I didn't know what I was doing. And, and I was, you know, you look up YouTube or whatever, but YouTube wasn't even as mature as it is now in regards right. to education. And you just got like, oh, Charlie, you bit my finger. Yes, exactly. Right. <laughs> and, and so that's how long we're talking. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so I, next thing I know, I, oh, this is how you cut. And this, oh, this is how you do this. And you do that. And, oh, I got this really good idea. And I was actually able to create this ghost effect. Uh, to the music to where this guy did this huge jump and the music were like these wind chimes. And when the wind chimes hit, I had him disappear in the air and people were like, what? And it was because I learned how to dissolve two things together. And mm-hmm. the best part was I wasn't there to film it. I knew what I was going to want them to do. And I said, just let the camera run at a jump site for like a minute. Nobody jump, and then jump and then don't run for a long time. Like I knew what I wanted yeah. to do. So if you look, it's not the best because you can see the leaves kind of a little wacky or whatever, but it was a good thing. Anyways, my point being, that after going through that journey for that one little project, I was like, I just like, I, I'm a master of premiere. And it turns <laughs> out I was maybe solid in about 2% of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, even, even editing this podcast for your first time or whatever, I remember you texting me and you're like, you were excited. You're like, dude, I learned so much about Adobe Premiere yeah. this week. And yeah. you were excited because you picked up all these new things because the way we've been editing videos is so much different. Like now we have POV cuts and stuff like that. And, and you got to get color correction and audio is huge, of course. Yeah. And you learned all these things. So it's like, that's, that's fun. I, I, there was some sort of test they gave us back in the day at work. Remember it was like, uh, what are your strengths? Yeah. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Some strengths finder thing. I'm sure lots of people listening have heard about this and probably been, it probably ran through your organizations too. But um, my, my number one, was learning yeah like that was interesting to me and so i obviously love learning that's what that meant and and so this journey of being a content creator has been perfect for me yeah because i've had to learn all these different skill sets along the way you know we talk about all the technical stuff to make a video but there's there's so much more you know there's there's um being kind of a people person like you need to you need to network in this in this space you need to be able to reach out for collabs um, when it comes to like sponsorships becoming a thing, you know, if you get to that point, you need to be able to negotiate, you need yeah. to be able to, you need to be able to organize your time. That's that time management is big too, for me. Like anybody I, I've shown this on like my streams and stuff, but like people are I, a lot of the questions I get is how do you do so much? Right. Yeah. How do you, especially when I was still working, yeah. uh, you know, my full-time job in addition to this, how do you get so much done? And I'd pull up my calendar and I'd say like, look, I have blocked off every minute of my day. I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing, when I'm supposed to be doing it. And so then you become a master of time management because you end up juggling so many things. Yep. And I wouldn't be able to get half as much done if I didn't like have that and like stick to it. But then my my personality also likes to have a schedule. You do. You know, so it's it's helped in, in a couple of ways. It's, it's like taking down some of my anxiety about. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. It just takes that off my plate. Yeah. I know what I'm supposed to be doing because it's written in, in stone, you know, on my, my Google calendar. But it's it's good to have that. Like, so there's another like skill set. So we're from doing all this, you end up getting not only these like technical skills that you could put on a resume, right? Let's 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 say because this is a fear. We're gonna get into this in, in just a second, I think. Uh the whole 15 minutes of fame thing is a real concern for content creators. Yep. Um 
You know, like we're talking about the, oh, my video's 10 out of 10. That's it. My career's over. Guess I'll go back to a yeah. cubicle. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like you, you seriously have this fear and it's, 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 oh, it'll drive you insane. Right. But then at the same time, I'm like, okay, let me put myself at ease here. If that happened, right. If YouTube came out and said, you know what? We can't do this anymore. We're just going to shut down or we're going to stop monetizing. You guys aren't making money from us anymore. All the sponsorships go away. People decide they're sick of of me and you or whatever, and they just stop watching and listening. Um, and Twitch, whatever, goes away. All the stuff that we do goes away, right, overnight. Then what do I do? Well, over the last 10 years, I built up a resume. I can, I can do Photoshop. I can edit videos. Yeah. I can help with uh, landing sponsorship deals because I've had to work with sponsors myself. I, I can work with other content creators to give them advice on how to do things, uh, you know, how to start your channel, how to grow your channel, all that stuff. There's a lot of things I've learned over this journey that I think I could then put into like whatever the next venture yeah. is if I have to go there. I don't want to go there yet. So people, please, please keep, keep watching. <laughs> keep and watching. Thank you. Uh, spread the word. Tell your friends. Uh, <laughs> but it puts me at ease knowing that 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 we've kind of gained these skill sets. And like you said, like you become so much better at editing so much better at premiere like you probably could get a job if you needed to yeah being a video editor you yeah. know i i agree with that you're and you you end up developing a lot of like you said that it's this technical skills um that are transferable and then overall transferable skills yeah. as themselves right and that time management is a, bit, a very big piece of that it would be very appetizing if i had to hire somebody to know that they had the history of what it was to manage their own time at half the level that you manage your time right now, this is somebody I'm not going to have to babysit. This is somebody who mm -hmm. is a, is just a, a, a self starter a, in, in self provisioning. This is, this is very, very, very good stuff. So you're absolutely right. It, everything can go South and it's not all, not all is lost. There's right. so many skills we picked up along the way mm -hmm. and you're going to pick those up and you got to be patient with yourself in those times. You know, it's, it's, I, I learner was not even in my top five, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and I do like to learn or whatever, but, um, I don't know if you remember my number one and it was the only one in our entire organization. There was two people that had it in their top five and I was the only one that was my number one. My number one was communication. And, and I remember being it's like, nice. really? Like, I was like, how boring is that? You know, but I realized, well, I guess yeah, it's, yeah, you know what I mean? I yeah. can, I can tell a good story. I know how to relate to people and all that stuff. Um, There's so much more to communication. There, there is. Than you may think. And, and, yeah. and I think we have. Uh, scheduled podcast in the future. We will, and we'll cover that. Yeah, yeah exactly. it'll be, and it'll be a good topic, right? But you think about it, that communication base, I think that's what transfers directly into my storytelling. I like to tell a story, but yeah. the reason I think, and I could be wrong here, but I think the reason uh, I think my storytelling is good is because I know what people are hearing, right? I know what they're hearing. I know what is about to be perceived. And in that, that is an actual skill set to see things before you've created them. You know, and, and that, that, that's something I had it when I, back when I was just going to school for it and I was directing one of our assignments and the people on, on the team were very supportive, but they didn't know what I was doing. They had, they were like, what are you, why do you want me to get this shot? I'm like, it's going to be the music. They're like, there's music doesn't belong in this shot. I'm like, yes, it does. Trust me. And I, cause I had the whole vision mm -hmm. and I didn't know that I had that. And when it was done and I edited it, the guy who was challenging me, he goes, okay, you, you have, you have the eye. <laughs> like that was his thing. He goes, you have the actual eye. You see it before we even hit record. Yeah. You, and, and so that's when I realized I might have an actual skill set here that I've just been using to hone in on. But I think that all of that uh, is means nothing if you don't have that thick skin. And I want to talk. A, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the product itself. Yeah, we've been we've been like, oh, do content creation so great. You get to learn yeah. all this stuff. Well, unfortunately, it's not all rainbows and butterflies is no. it there there is kind of like the dark side and, and we did touch on the roller coaster of of worrying about 15 minutes of fame and um becoming irrelevant and there's 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 more to it and that thick skin is something that i'm still working on and and it comes to comments right so what we do is we put ourselves out there that's what we're doing right we, when you make content and you publish it on whatever platform you're publishing it on, you're putting yourself out there. Anytime you put yourself out there, you're, you're opening yourself up to ridicule oh, and, yeah. and negativity and, and all that stuff. And so then it becomes, how do you handle that, right? So young, younger kids that want to do this stuff, and they're experiencing it even like on a, on a like TikTok, right? 
you got young kids on TikTok and um, Snapchat before and, and that kind of stuff. And, and it became a thing where they'd put themselves out there. And then sure enough, they're getting some negative feedback and they're not emotionally mature enough to handle it. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm an old dude now and I'm still not emotionally mature enough to handle it. So I can't imagine seeing some of the stuff they're seeing yep. at such a young age. But uh, now that I am kind of older and still having more difficulty with it, it's it's something I have to constantly remind myself. Like we tend to focus on like if there's if there's 10 comments and nine of them are saying you are amazing that we love what you're doing. And then there's that one comment that just is is very, you know, not great. Not, you know, they're, they're kind of dissing on you and they're trying to tear you down or whatever for whatever reason my brain will completely disregard the nine great comments and yep. just focus on the, how do I make that one person that complained happy? Yeah. Because I innately am a people pleaser. And so those things stick with me and I've, I've caught myself many times because sometimes it'll, it'll like build up in me and I like boil over, you know what I mean? And I respond, you know, yeah. and I, I feed the troll, yeah. even though I know better by now, don't feed trolls. <laughs> feed the troll and I get mad and you you've angered me. What do you want from me? You know, and, and you lash back out and then no good comes from that. Yeah. You know, and I've had to learn that lesson, unfortunately, like over and over again. You know, you would think like, you know, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, whatever that one. You know, what I'm <laughs> you, you're but almost it, there. It, yeah. yeah, I almost had it. I almost had it. But I I haven't learned from it. And so time will go by and then I'll, I'll do it again. I'm like, what am I doing? Come on. Come on. Ten years. You know better than this. I just can't help it. I know. I can't help it because it gets to a certain point to where they just, they find the right words to get under your skin. Yeah. You that, know? That, that, because that is their skill set. Yeah. Okay. And, and I don't want to get too negative on these people because I do, I, I have a different perspective here. I, I don't, I don't care what they think. I, I, I don't, I've gotten plenty, you know what I mean? I've gotten, you know, the plenty of the negative comments and, and, and the majority of the comments are overwhelmingly positive, yeah. right? On, on my, my personal stuff, our stuff, all that stuff. You and I have released videos in the past that were very well um, received. And you're like, listen, I saw this comment and I'm like, there's 1500 comments, man. There's 1500. <laughs> there's one, one, one dude. Yeah. Let's relax. Like who cares? Who cares to the point to where I'm not saying, Hey, don't care about it. Even though that's what I'm saying. I'm more like my brain's like, how do you care about that? Like if you were trying to get me to care, I'd be like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to like, there's, I'm looking out your window and there's like a, there's a, a bunch of rocks and I'm looking at a specific rock. I care about that rock as much as I do about this comment. Like, I, I don't like, I don't like, you can't get me to care about that rock. I don't, I can't do it. So I find myself in this space to where that, this is another great difference between the two of us. And yeah. I always, and I, the only reason I care now is that when I see negative comments on like, you know, on maybe your videos, which are very few and far between now I'm upset because somebody's you know coming, after, affect me. coming after my buddy, yeah. you know what I mean? And so, and I get, I get protective. I get very upset. Um, so I'm always trying to find ways to bring you into a space to, I don't, I'm not trying to get you to be like me, but in this respect, I would, I do want you to I'd be love like, to be like you. Yeah. It's, I'd love to be like so you. I'd much love to easier. care less about those comments. The, what I find is it's a thin line between, um, you know, me trying to find the feedback to help me improve. And, and then, the, and then, it, and then is that what that is yeah, you can, or, or is right. it legitimately just somebody being a jerk? Right. That you, <laughs> you might know? be mis, you might be misinterpreting what was intended to actually be legitimate, constructive criticism. Right. It might be. And, and now their heart is in a good space and it just, maybe it touched on a sensitive topic or whatever, but mm-hmm. it's pretty easy to tell the difference between this is somebody trying to help. And this is somebody who's trying to be nasty. Yeah. And, and that, and I think the best way to everybody, here's the, here's the deal. Everybody wants to be great, right? That's just, there's just nobody who doesn't want to be great. Okay. Everybody wants to be great, but the bar for being great is a dynamic one. And it's a shifting one. And, and mainly it's, it's each individual set of optics looks at a different bar of what being great is, but the method to get there uh, is d- distinguishes what kind of person you are. And what I mean by that is that if the bar is up here and this is the, these are the people you want to be like, you should try to climb up to it. You should, you should grow. You should move up, grab that bar, pull up to there, see, get the skill set, study them and get there. That mm-hmm. was, that's, that's the good person. Then there's other people who just grab that bar and they try to pull everybody down to them. Right. Right. And that's the trolls. And th- those are the people. That's why I'm like, I, I don't care. This is somebody, this is a person that is likely never produced anything. This is a person who has likely not put themselves out there or did and got so crushed. They couldn't handle it. And they, you know, they hurt people, hurt people. 
and they find themselves in this space to where they don't even entertain climbing up. They just want to grab you and pull you down. That, that just, for some reason, that is their warm blanket is to bring all this awesomeness that is somehow giving them resentment for the world and, and take the color out of it. And that's why it's like, dude, that's just not worth my time. It's not worth your yeah. time. What are you, what are you doing? You should pity them. <laughs> you should pity them. That's I, and I mean it, I'm not saying, oh, you poor little thing. I'm saying that's horrible. Yeah. yeah that's sad. I, I'm, I'm genuinely sorry that this is where your heart is. That's, that's rough. But when your objective to reaching greatness is just to lower the bar and pull everybody down to you, that's, that's no good. Yeah. And you don't have any, you impulse have no business caring about that type of stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, part of me too is, is, uh, well, we get back to that strengths finder. My, guess what my number two was? Har uh, harmony. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't let, I didn't let you guess. You were going to say it, weren't you? No, I don't know what it was going to be. I was okay. going to make a joke or, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Cut you off. So yeah, harmony was my number two. So when I see that, you know, it's back to that people pleaser thing. I, I, I'm like, Oh, they're not happy with me and now I'm not happy with them. And then like sometimes I'll try to retort, you know, re reply in the comment and, and try to educate them. Well, this is why it's a certain way, you know, like, yeah. like, oh, you, you don't like that. I picked orange for this build. All right, let's take a mundane example. But this is why, because it's actually on the color wheel. It's a complimenting color. You try to like educate them. Yeah, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. <laughs> like having that back and forth. You think you're going to like you, you think you're going to like get this person to come out of that negative space or whatever that they're in and try to under and get some kind of understanding. Yeah. And it usually just digs the hole deeper. And yeah. so now. Uh, I just have to, I just have to ignore it, you know, and not reply to them and stuff. And, and, and that becomes a whole nother thing. It's like, okay, if I'm not replying to comments that people think that I no longer read them or care, and you know, I spend way too much time reading comments. Dude. I probably read 99% of my comments, which is, it's just, uh, that's not on my calendar for to how to spend my time in the day. And somehow I still fit that in and I probably shouldn't. Yeah. You know? I don't know how you do it, bro. I don't know how you do it. I want, and I, and I'm going to be outing myself right now. If I, obviously the videos I release are, are going to get a lot less views than you, right? Which means in turn, they're going to get a lot less comments, right? And I might, and so first of all, to everybody who leaves comments, I do read as many of them as I possibly can, but this is no joke. If I release a video and I get a hundred comments, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be on a good day. Maybe, maybe I read 30, 40 of them or whatever. And I try, I'm not trying to ignore them. It's not like I read them and they bug me. It's not that it's literally like, uh, that's just my, my nature. Right. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll prove if you get 5,000 comments, you will read 5,000 comments. <laughs> Just about it. Yeah. yeah, and it's unbelievable. Like, you'd miss nothing. To the point to where you've pointed out a comment on one of my videos. Yeah. Like, oh, this person. I even read your comments. Yes. And I get done reading mine. I'm like, I do, I'm, I'm out of comments. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go read Kiskiz's comments. I need to keep reading comments. What was the movie? This is this is important um, because when it, this is, you know, we're, we're talking about putting your product out there and having a thick skin. This is important. You got to, you got, you got to. You cannot wallow. You cannot get in there. You cannot sink in there. And the best representation of this I've seen is um, Wreck It Ralph, right? I think it was the second movie. I don't know if you know this, but they the way that they were able to, they they, they darn near personified the comment section, right? And yeah. what they did was it was in the basement. The comments of of you know the blow up that had happened with Wreck It Ralph. The comment was it him or fix it? I don't care. Anyways, the comments it was Ralph. The comments were like in the basement and he found his way into there and it was these big giant walls of all these awful comments. Yeah, and somebody this. was like, don't let him in there or whatever. And there was a dark, dank environment. The creators who created this, this scene, I remember watching this being like, everybody understands what's being told. Content creators are looking at the scene going, wow, you nailed it. Because yeah. he's just like looking and he's, and it's not, it wasn't just like a monitor. It was a giant monitor. It was him being overwhelmed by, I mean, the negative comment, the font was like 700, you know what I mean? He's looking up at these giant, awful comments about him. And he's just like, it's just bearing down on him. And the lighting is just, is casting the shadow. And it's just, was one of the most amazing scenes ever. And I was like, what they're getting at, the per the people who wrote this scene, they know what it is um, to, to let that affect you. They know yeah. what it is to let that consume you, let that bury you. And that's what they're getting across. Yes. Yeah. Now there's plenty of content creators who have, quit because they got to him you know they just had to quit uh it's it can be if if you let it get to you and and i'm still i i think i'm better now at, at not letting it drag me down so much um but if you do if you let it sink in a little too much like you you will start to have this self-doubt yeah it's like so 
that negative energy just over to overcomes you yep. and then it's like oh i can't i can't do this anymore like we see a lot of we see a lot of content creators go through this like mental health uh struggles and and you know quitting burnout and all that kind of stuff and a lot of it is driven by by that i yeah. think you know um so you got to be ready for that you know if we're given if if the point of this podcast was to kind of pull back the curtain literally today yeah. um and give advice to anybody that may be considering this and also just kind of letting people kind of uh, peek into our world and kind of understand, you know, what we go through. Yeah. Because I think it's, I think it's interesting, you know, I, with this studio being built, I've had so many contractors come in and because I moved in before it was actually done, they come in and they're like, they look at this back wall that has this, all this stuff and they're just like, whoa, so <laughs> how does this work? Because <laughs> I want to do it too. Right. Can yeah. I get one of those? Yeah, well, there's that too. <laughs> like, you, you, you get the people, they're like, oh, you play video games for a living? Like, my kid would love to do that. And I'm like, ee, ee. <laughs> you start pulling at the collar, and I'm like, ah, oh, there's a lot more than just firing up a video game and yeah. putting it on, you know, social media. It's, and I try to explain, and I'm like, also, you, you could be the best out there you you could be have your own like niche you could have you could be doing everything right and still go nowhere yeah. right because yep. it's 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 not a guarantee that just because you're really good at it you know there's there's also uh luck and opportunity and all all these things have to come together right and I was, I was, I was lucky. I'll admit it. I, there, there's more to it. I'm not going to say it was all luck. You know, no. obviously I worked hard for it and, uh, did a lot of the right things. Opportunities came my way at the right times for me. And I, I took advantage of them. Right. Yep. That's, that's one of the, the pieces is like, when you do have an opportunity, you have to be ready to take advantage of it. And I did. And, uh, but some of it was luck. I mean, some of it was luck. I was, I was lucky to meet who I met and I was lucky to, uh, get, invited to hermitcraft like all these things that yeah they were a culmination of a lot of different parts that were necessary in order to get here and i some of those were out of my control and have to you just you have to admit that like some of it's out of your control mm -hmm. you can you can do your best and still still not go anywhere with this and that's that's a hard thing yeah. to accept but this goes back to the the whole notion of that covers my coxbill right and yeah. it goes back to that because that you weren't on Hermitcraft when you were making money. You know what I mean? You were already starting to make money. And and so my point being aim, aim low. And that sounds right. really bad, but honestly, aim low. If your only barometer, if my only barometer for success is, is to have 2 million subscribers, I'm going to be a feeling like a failure until I'm at 2 million, I'd which I'll be feeling like a failure. I would see yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> there you go. So <laughs> what I need to do is, is you need to set yourself some low standards. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's just, just get to that first hundred subscribers. So when you get there, aim for that thousand, it's going to take a while. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you can do, but you got to just aim for it. aim low and celebrate. You got to celebrate those celebrate moments. The, yeah. the, the small victories every yeah. step of the way I can learn from them. I'm literally like I'm mentoring myself in this sentence yeah. right here. I struggle greatly with this greatly i feel like an unbelievable fraud with my channels i really really do i like what i do i like that people enjoy it but i'm like what am i doing like what this is this is what a waste of time this is a waste of time what am i doing you yeah. know what i mean but that's that's a silly way to look at it because it's affecting a lot of people yeah a lot of people get to see what i put out there and what i put out there i'm actually very proud of you know i enjoy it that's yeah. you know, lean into that that's a big piece of it too it's interesting how you know we need to probably wrap this up it's getting long it, we didn't mean for this one to get long but it no. did uh, but it's interesting how a shift in perspective can change everything. Um, I remember, you know, you as I grew in views and stuff like that, uh, you know, I got to a certain point, uh, you know, when the pandemic hit, things were going really well. I mean, there was a time I was getting a million views a video. Mm -hmm. All right. That didn't that didn't stay right. The panda, you know, obviously the pandemic, like everybody was looking for content. And then we knew as the pandemic was going to slow down, people would be like, oh, yeah, I remember I like going outside. I don't need to watch as much yeah. YouTube anymore. So obviously we knew the views were going to drop or whatever. Um, so then it was, then it was like, okay, how do I shift my perspective to understanding that, okay, I'm not getting a million views anymore. Not even getting half a million views. Maybe I'm getting, you know, 300,000 or whatever. Uh, how, how do I make sure that in my head, I'm not going, well, I used to get a million. So now I'm only getting 300,000. I obviously I'm, I, I suck now, you know, yeah. like how do you let that not affect you personally? So, what I like to do is think about my viewers and being in real life with them, right? So if I look at a video, 
let's say my uh, I put out my hardcore series, which gets far less views than Hermitcraft, which is fine because I enjoy it, right? And it gets, let's say, 50,000 views. I'm like, okay, I could be down about that, right? Because, gosh, I was getting half a million views just a couple months ago. Now it's 50,000. I think about 50,000 people in a room. Guess what kind of room that is? That's a football stadium. Yeah, yeah. That's a football stadium full of people still watching my content. Yeah. And when you visualize that in your head, it will blow your mind. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm on a stage basically. And I'm behind my computer screen. So if I was on a real stage, I'd be sweating bullets. But it, <laughs> I'm behind a uh, you know, computer screen and all this many people, the same amount of people that can fit into the stadium that our Arizona Cardinals play in yeah. are watching my video. Yeah. How am I not happy about that? You just got to put that into perspective and just be like, and even if it was, even if it was 20 people, that's, you just filled out a room, like a, a classroom. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just went up on stage in front of a classroom and, and, you know, talk to that many people and that, that many people were engaged, right? They chose to be there. Yeah. They weren't, it's better than a classroom a classroom. They're forced to be there. Yeah. <laughs> they chose to be there and watch you and listen to you talk about whatever it is you're going to talk about. And that's just even 20 feels amazing. You know, see, that's not, I got to say, I could learn so much from you. That's so good. That's such a healthy way to look at it, man. That's what I got to be doing more of. So even, even th there you go, even for myself, right? I, I actually yeah. do consider myself to be a relatively established content creator. I've done, you know, many, many, many videos as you know, and, and, and I, but I still have my own doubts, but I'm still trying to, to be the best version of myself that I can be. And then, in order to do so, I've got to stay open-minded and I've got to look for opportunities to grow myself. And this being one of them mm -hmm. is my own perspective. Get yeah. over yourself. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's, that's what I got to do. Get over yourself and, and take a peek at this and be like, yeah, he's, he's absolutely right. Impulse is right. Like, look at this with those set of optics and it just changes everything. Yeah. 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 I, I, we have a lot to learn from each other. And I think that's what, what has made our relationship so great. We got a yin and a yang type of thing, you know? You're able to to brush off negative comments. I'm able to to put views and stuff into a perspective that keeps me motivated. One thing I did tell you when this whole journey started, you know, ten years ago, was I felt like this is where you belong. Mm -hmm. And so, part of me has just been like, please don't give up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like that's why I like sharing these these perspectives with you. I'm like, I want you to continue because I know you belong here and i just i, I want to see you continue to succeed and grow and and hopefully someday be able to say this is your job oh as well. that'd be great yeah. so and you told me you told me if 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 i ever pull the trigger and i go full-time you're gonna be right behind me yeah and so like i'm i'm constantly like i am like your number one cheerleader basically because i know you belong here and i know that's where um you like if you get to that point to to where you can affect even more people that's what you want to do i remember you're saying like last year was you wanted to double the laughs or whatever. You yeah, remember that? Yep. And you went for it I, and you, and you grew, you like, you doubled your audience and, and you had everybody enjoying everything you're doing. And I just like, yes, this is, this is what the world needs. Yeah. More skis. I remember <laughs> you know? I, I was at 3,500, um, followers on Twitch. And my goal was by the end of the year to be at 7,000. And that was just last year. And, and now I'm like over 25,000. Wow. Right? And so it just happens. It just, wow. And so it's, you know, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like I'm at 25,000. You think I would be pumped. What do I do? I look at what you're at. I'm like, come on. Yeah, show, right? I got to stop it. All right. That's my, this challenge is for me. I'm going to sell. I'm going <laughs> to I thought we weren't doing a challenge. No, okay. I'm, I'm going to, I'm issuing a challenge for okay. myself. I got to, this is, this has to stop. Like this is, this is a problem I legitimately have. And if I want to call my, you, you say I belong here. I appreciate that. I want to, uh, I mean, coming from you, that means, you know, the moon. Uh, I want to be here. I know I want to, if I'm going to have any fighting chance, I need to get in my own corner. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. Gotta believe I have, you know what? I edit these. I, I, that was a vulnerable moment. I could edit this out, but I, I don't think you I better not. I'll put it, I'll keep it in. <laughs> <laughs> you better not. Um, another long one. Uh, but it was such a fun subject yeah. that, that we dug into it. And I hope, I hope it kind of, Peeled back the curtain, you guys get a better a better idea of what we experience as content creators. Especially if you're thinking about going into this. Yeah. I think it's I think it's I I kind of wish somebody had warned me. Although I'm glad they didn't. I'm 
Because if this, if anything about this is scaring you away, that's not the intention. Yeah, this is just nothing but a briefing session. The this reason is- I, I, I like the idea of somebody telling me is because because I, I like the idea of learning a bunch of stuff. I would have got jazzed about it. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I also think it, we would be you know prudent to to not warn people that like it's gonna be work as well. Yeah, like because otherwise people are gonna they're gonna be like I we were talking about the uh, podcast before. I kind of want it. Yep. You know what I mean? Then the mm-hmm. What's Stopping You podcast, we talked about that. They're going to go into I, I kind of want it. Well, guess what? If you're warned up front a little bit about like, get ready, you have to you get ready to work hard. Then you're you're really going to go for it if you really want it. Yeah. And then you'll have a chance to succeed. So anyway, right. wow, that was fun. That was a good one. Uh, I got, every single time I get nervous about. Yeah. Is this topic going to feel good is it gonna is this, it gonna resonate is it going to does it have gonna, the legs yeah is it even a proper a proper podcast are we gonna get 10 minutes in and realize we don't have anything to talk about and then yeah. an hour goes by yeah and we look at the clock going well yeah. we had just talked about maybe doing shorter podcasts uh. it didn't exactly <laughs> go as planned but this is this is imp and skiz everybody we wow. when we get together this is this is us we so just go we yeah how many discord calls have meant to be five minutes and end up 50. I know that, that's, that's, uh, you know what? I'm not going to say that has to stop. I dig it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, save it for the podcast. That's going to do things. Save it for the podcast. Yeah. Yes. That's true <laughs> because you're so relaxed around me. And then, and you're like, you're funny. You're a funny dude, but you're super funny when it's just you and me. Cause you're so relaxed <laughs> yeah. and that's why you'll do stuff and say stuff. I'm like, shut up, save that. That's good stuff. I can't bottle it. <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks everybody for joining us again. Uh, another fun week and uh, we're going to keep going. We got, we got a list growing list of things we want to talk about. So we'll be back next week, every Friday. Be ready to catch us. See you next time. See ya.